O2 bong, brother. So where is big boys? <laughs> Next stop to the dyno. Hey Juan, did you bring an extra pair of underwear? I hear a lot of banging, brother. What's going on? You even got, you, what, what did you just take out of your ears? My earplugs, bro. <laughs> That's how They're much right I heard. So what's up, dude? What, what do we got going? The last vlog, we were both let down on how far we got. Yeah, we couldn't do a full dyno pull, and I think we were expecting to be able to. We talked to Alan, he's like, dude, get the bungs on there and get the proper tuner, and let's get a real tune on it and find out the real numbers. Forget right it, here, what do you bro. got right here? Look, oh, two bung, brother. This is what we're gonna be putting on it. Got the locations marked out, but yeah, let me go grab the other side. All right, go grab it. Well, look, Christmas is continuing for us. <laughs> Actually, we got one for you. I opened yours, I'm pretty sure. 21 and up, yeah. yeah. Did you talk to Alan about yeah. the Bluetooth? Yeah. You could do it? Yep. He's done it? Yeah. We were a little bummed out with the last tune dyno runs, as you guys know. And here's the thing. We even talked to Alan about this. We kind of knew going into it that the fuel pack may struggle getting this done. And we do know that there are ways to maybe make it work. Alan's more comfortable with this master tune, but he also said, let's stay consistent to the first way we dyno the bike and yes. see what happens. Like, so he even wanted to kind of just see what happened. Um, we're kind of playing, we know the right way would have been to get this master tune right oh, away. Yeah. yeah. But we're also just like playing with different options and seeing what happens and just sharing it with you guys. So, yeah. I mean, there's a chance that it could have ran good, you know, yeah. like, and then you didn't have to do it. There's always like gonna be like that extra 10% to dial it in, but obviously this has a lot more than 10%, yeah. but we didn't know. That's what yeah. we were trying to find out, and that's what we found out. So, we're going back at it, taking his exhaust off. He grabbed himself some 18 millimeter, basically bungs, so we can run uh, the 18 millimeter sensors, the wide band sensors on the dyno. And then we have the actual tuner. I know, doesn't look like much, but this is the key to success. It unlocks the whole ECU. <laughs> we're gonna get to this, and the thing is, this time we're gonna trailer the bike up to the dyno, and we're gonna get the real, real numbers. We're gonna let Alan work on this thing for couple hours, maybe a day, maybe two days. So we're gonna see what he gets up to. So stay tuned. By the end of this vlog, we are going to have the real official dyno numbers, the proper air fuel ratio that will be good for his engine. So this thing's been on you didn't for 10,000 miles. You didn't put any anti-seize on there? I did, but we've been running it lean the whole time <laughs> and burned it off. <laughs> I got here at eight and I got that far. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So the thing is, even though we have been in this shop for a couple months, we have yet to actually put together the R&D room. And so we're still looking for stuff as we work on things. But you really haven't found any WD-40 or anything? Uh, All right, my boy Jake found this in, I remembered now. Right there, that six and one will work right here. Boom. All right. There it's old, down. dude. Nice. Spray on your brake. Spray my rotor. <laughs> All right, give me a couple. Give me a couple turns, dude. This you didn't even. You were running it dry, dude. No, I had some spritzer from last time. From last time. Look at that. Well, I pushed it in to like soft lube. There you go. It's coming out, dude. Of course it is. Oh, it's gonna slip right out, dude. Look at that. All right, now you're just bending it, dude. I know. The trick. You gotta spread the little leg thing. Yeah, go ahead. She's off. Still dry as hell in there, but she's off. And now we're gonna take the header off. Grab that. Off. All right, so now, I don't know if the camera can see it, but I marked off the location of where I want the bungs. This is actually like, I used to work at Van Sign, so I had some cool tools, and this is the length of the wide band O2 18mm sensor and kind of fabbed up some hose clamps, and it allows you to hold it into place. You can't see, but the rest of it's cut off, so you could place it anywhere without having to make a hole. Gotcha. Now I'm marking it, and then we're gonna start drilling through, making room for the sensor. Usually when you're cutting it, you get heat and it burns off the Sharpie, so I'm gonna get some scribe marks in there. That way those stay there. All right, see my scribe marks? Let's see, look, this normally the sensor has yeah. something that goes it's in there. It's a dummy sensor. Just cut it off and then it's gonna help us. Nice little tool, my friend. Yeah. Start making some holes. Good. I 
It looks like you didn't go slowly. That's what you mean. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Let's do a little halfer. I was getting carried away. Pretty big. We don't want the sensor to risk hitting the walls because then it'll jam it in there. Mm. It's happened to me before. I think I'm just gonna hit it with uh, Dremel. It's close, you know, but I'd rather have more room than that one. Yeah, it's drilled out. All right, so it looks like Juan got the hole big enough. As you can see, he's gonna clean up the holes, weld it on, and move on to put one there. One. Let's check that thing out, dude. Not bad. Not bad. So what's the plan with the next one? Where are you putting it? Right there. It's gonna be a little bit harder, but we'll get it done. So it'll once... be harder to get to now, but it's easy to get on and off the bike. Gotcha. So that's gonna be the trade-off. Rear cylinder, one we putting in that corner. He says that that corner is the easiest corner to get the 18 millimeter sensor in and out when it's like, yeah, when the bike, when the pipe is on the bike. Oh, nice. Trying to dial it in so there isn't huge gaps that I have to fill. All right, what do we got? There it is. It's gonna get the job done. We're gonna throw it on the bike and uh, we're gonna head out. Let's do it. It didn't have any anti seize, bro. Way it won't fight us next thing. She has to come off. Load her up. Lube her up. <clears throat> <sighs> <sighs> Well, why don't you pull this up, dude, so you don't break your freaking. Oh, I <coughs> forgot I didn't do that. I was getting excited. I was, I was like, like, it's almost done. I was like, this thing's moving around a lot. You have the little dog bone that goes in yeah. there? How do you feel, Juan? Feeling great right now, brother. Oh, we're almost done putting this thing back together. I got your tuner. We can't right. forget that. All right, can you I'm put putting my it, bag on. Put putting it in my pocket. Are we? All right. So let's just get this bike done. Air fuel ratio running good. We can get some real numbers on it. Put the bag on, roll her off the lift. You got me an enclosed trailer, right? Yeah. So this time I rented a bike trailer from U-Haul. That way we don't have to put any more miles on it until it is tuned. Let's get the show on the road. Here, move your bike so then I can back the truck up. You're gonna back it up? You want me to back it up and put it in that? Oh, now you gotta jump up the ramp. <laughs> I think that's the best option. Let me see. I, I cleared the brake line on my yeah, side. Alright, now lean towards Luis. Alright, now lean towards me. Alright, we're good. How do we put it in? T-Sport mode? Favorite last words of everyone loading something up. It ain't going nowhere. Yeah. T-Sport mode active. Yeah, I did. All right, dude. Let's you need... get some more straps on this thing and yeah. Five straps holding her on. Next stop to the dyno. Let's get it. <laughs> Go forward a little more. How are we looking? I think we're okay. Well, I'll load this thing real quick. Hey, it's not my bike. Last thing I need to do is drop this in this sandy dirt. Look, look at that. 
Bikes waiting to get worked on pile this time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll move it to the front of the line. You got the tuner, right? It has the Phantom 9 tuner. Should I put it back just, to stock? That was my first question is what tuner is. So uh, put the stock one in it because okay. what happens when I marry the TTS to it and we save that first caliber, we save the calibration and the file that's in there. We save that as a BTM file. Okay. And at any time that you need to do something with the Harley dealer with that, we can retune, we can reflash it. So when they do their digital log on it, it has that's the it. right part number and serial number on okay. it. Good to see you. Yeah. All right. Here's the deal. We're gonna speed this up for you guys. So in the next couple of minutes, you'll see this thing dyno tuned, but we're gonna leave it here for a couple of days. So that way, Alan has a little bit more leisure to tune it. I know that Alan likes to tune bikes at different temperatures and times of the day. He'll start it in the morning, get going on it, work on it for a couple hours, let the bike cool down again, redo it. He likes to do that for like two or three days sometimes. Yeah, he takes his time. He was explaining to me last time the whole process, gets it off the dyno, he rides it. Yeah. And he does a lot, of, I mean, proper, like you what you should do. So I don't want him to rush rush it you know we're not in a hurry yeah and for you guys it'll be a couple yeah minutes. since we are <laughs> since we already screwed up the last tune and didn't give you guys or not didn't give you guys but we didn't give the bike its proper treatment it deserved so this time it's going to get its proper treatment we're dropping off the tuner we're dropping off the bike stay tuned because we're going to come back here in a couple days and he is going to have this thing dialed in proper yep. numbers we're going to show the dyno tunes and we're going to uh show a couple runs and then we're going to go rip it on the street ourselves should be the right one if you want to check it out. <laughs> He's like, it's like, there's nothing in here. <laughs> Empty Christmas present. Yeah, exactly. No, that's it. Well, and he would like this in the saddlebag. Sure. What would we do to your fork, dude? Oh. Yeah, and it's not even the easy to replace part. You straight yeah, but you could clean that up pretty easy. Putting the stock calibration back in it. So it's got a, we could save the factory tune, factory yep, gotcha. info. We're going to leave this with you for a couple days. You like to have it. So you could do a morning tune, let it cool down, do a tune in the evening, let it cool down, try it the next day, take it out on the road. The proper way to do it is not only the performance on the dyno, but then to take it off the dyno and make sure what I was trying to simulate on a dyno repeats on the road, first yep. of all, for drivability. Yep. The second part of the tune is to make sure that thing starts correctly. Yep. I like to start it cold in the morning. I like to make sure we get it hot. I like to start it in the afternoon. I like to shut it off and start it. I like you show up at the bar, you stay for a couple hours, make sure at that temperature it starts good because all of those areas are adjustable with the TTS. Gotcha. So we don't have to just say, oh, that's just part of the tune. Yep. Because we can fix that. And hopefully with the proper, you know, uh, fuel delivery and maybe a little spark adjustment that we can break that 100 mark. Woo! Hey, really, I think if she puts down 100, CVO is going down. With, uh, what's the guy's name? Yeah, with uh, Ruben. That's the best thing that has happened to this team. He did put the 18 millimeter bungs in the best place that he believes you can get to. One is there, and then there's another one um, on the bottom for the front cylinder. Yeah, it should have pretty good. I put a, I have like a dummy. 18 mil bond, uh, mm -hmm. sensor. I think you could still ride with it if you need to, but it uh, should be pretty accessible. Here I was, that probe, the dummy probe I had was kind of like the wire was in the way when yeah. we had talked about putting it here. Right. So I ended up just going there and there. Gotcha. Can't wait till it runs good. Uh, there it is, stock maps back on it. Ready to rock. There we go. We're gonna get out of here before traffic builds up and uh, give us a holler when you're ready. Happy New Year. All right, same to you. Yeah, yep. thank you. <laughs> See ya. He was telling me, he's thinking he's gonna probably play with it for like five days. Okay. I think he's, it's like, all, yeah. yeah. Just all the different starts and temperatures and. What is up guys? We're back. The day has come. I'm ready. I went back, I grabbed a trailer cause I felt like I didn't want to throw Juan on the back of my bagger to get him up to Mojave to pick the bike up. You guys have seen enough of that and I don't think this vlog needs it. So I went back, I picked up the U-Haul bike trailer. I got a text from Alan. I'm going to read this. He said, Juan's new tune with a smiley face. He sent me the, the graph. I'll show you guys real quick. Dink. 
He sent me the graph. I haven't shown one yet. I have not seen it, but I'm assuming it's good. If he texted Lance a smiley face, yeah. I'm sure it's something good. So then I'm like, holy, I like, let me know when you're ready for us. And he goes, I want to check cold start. Someone needs to road test it, double check the tune. I won't be able to do that. He's hurting right now. He's got some back issues, but then he's like, so give me another day or so. I'm going to get somebody to come help me. Today's the day where we can go get the bike. We're pretty excited. I think he's going to give us some dyno runs to show Juan how it's running and then he's gonna have us also road test a little bit ourselves so let's get up to mojave let's go pick up your bike homie let's get it We made it out here. It's okay. lunch, dude. I'm starving. I'm starving. What's <laughs> up, Alan? It's taco time. You said a couple of vlogs ago, you were like, you gotta go try, what'd you say, Fat Boys? Fat Boy Taco. We're gonna give it a shot with you. My hunger is going away. I think I could wait. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew it was good because you texted him. So yeah. I'm just, I'm excited. I think we should grab tacos, but I think we should put on the dyno first. Let him see the numbers on the dyno, air fuel ratio, and then we, he road tests it. Is that cool? All Got right. it? it? It would be better if he road tested it first yep. before we could run it up. I All gotta, right. I gotta warm it up anyway. All right. There you go. So we could that. go road test it and we could throw it up there. Let's see what my butt dino says. <laughs> <laughs> the butt dino is the only one that's important. All yeah, right. that's it true. Is. The dino sheets are just for talking shit the bar. <laughs> 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 that is facts. That is facts. <laughs> All right, well, let's go eat and we'll come back. It's a race bike coming back. So, where is Big Boys? Big Boys Tacos, it is. You ready, Juan? I'm ready. All right, there it is. Fat Boys Tacos. Oh, look at Juan. Oh, bro, take Digging a look. In they right got away. street tacos and they got mulita. So I always run back to mulita. Can I get uh, three pastor tacos? Some chicken tacos. Is that okay? How many? Um, three? Like? I'm going to do two al pastor street tacos and then I'm going to do an al pastor mulita. Run the red on on two and the green on one. He said that the uh, red's really spicy. All right, so my boy Juan wants them on both of his too. So red on his, yeah. Try it, I'll run it one green. Yeah, you got one green and then we'll probably throw some avocado. I was back there helping him whip it up. I saw you. He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, you want red or green salsa? And I was like, oh, red. He's like, he looked at me. He's like, it's really hot. <laughs> I was like, all right, run it on two. I'll run one green. <laughs> there it is, boys. Mine with a mulita. Yep, looking good. You didn't get any salsa on yours. They put it on the side. I have freaking. I think for a no trumpo, it holds its own. But they do a really good job here. Their marinade on their pasta is tasty. It's been super, very good. I tried the green salsa. It was amazing. It's my first stab at the red salsa. Red salsa. There is some avocado salsa on top. <laughs> it's spicy and it's got some kick. I don't even have a water here. There ain't no hot sauce I can't handle. I'm I'm anticipating with your bike probably. 45 to 50 miles a gallon. I think it was in the low 40s. So. Did my job right with that camshaft, you should be 48 with it. Well, so. As long as you run 91 octane, second fill up. So yeah, let me gonna, go first, gonna, right? Yeah. That's why Luke always offers the nozzle to somebody else first. <laughs> I thought he was just being polite. Like, oh dude, Luke's gonna fill me up. No. Luke's like, I'll buy you a tank. Really, he's just trying to get the, the yeah. first two to three gallons out. Yeah. I'm bummed. We're not gonna take the baggers to Sturgis this year. Like, my bike's gonna be dialed. More power, better fuel economy, just more setup to crush the miles, and we're not taking it. But we haven't decided what we're fully taking, whether we're allowed to ride EFI bikes or carbureted bikes to Sturgis this year. So why is it different? 
we want to go to Sturgis a different way. Like he's ridden his Dyna before to Sturgis. I've ridden my Dyna to Sturgis, both EFI Dynas. I've ridden the soft tail to Sturgis, but we were like, we've been riding the baggers the last like two years. And we're like, all right, let's make this trip a little more exciting. Let's like take a longer way to get there. And maybe let's ride like carbureted bikes, like the FXRs. Yeah, or we have a DX that's a carbureted. We have FXRs, you know, see how the elevation changes affect the bike and the temperatures. And see how many times you have to bust out the tools. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of where our heads are at this year, just to kind of spice it up. This will be like my 10th or 11th year going to Sturgis, so I just kind of want to like do something different. It'll remind you and and understand why we went to fuel injection, <laughs> especially when you got to go through those elevation changes with a carbureted bike. Yeah, that's what that's kind of what we want to do. Just have fun with it. Well, you find out that it really gets affected when you get over like 5,200 feet elevation. All of a sudden, the bike's going to be lethargic. The fuel mileage is going to drop off. That's because it's going to be extremely fat, extremely rich, because there's just no oxygen available. And we were up to like 13, we went to Silverton, which is like 13, 14,000 feet in elevation. The thing's going to be spewing gas out the tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're going to spend a whole day at high elevation. If you have one of the flat side carburetors, it's really easy to pop the bowl nut off, slide a smaller main jet in there, and then it takes care of part throttle and, the, and high speed. Right. You ride that around for a day, and then as soon as you come back out of the elevation, one of your gas stops, it's just a quick little change, and yeah. throw a smaller jet in it. And yeah, all the bikes have McCoonies. Demolish those tacos. All right, Alan, thanks for taking us to your local taco joint, brother. You're welcome. It was My good. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for buying. Yeah. <laughs> it did the part. Yeah. Pastor was good. Salsa was great. Food is pretty good. I'm impressed. So if you're in Mojave on the 14, probably heading to Mammoth or Reno or going to LA from those places, stop by Fat Boys Tacos. Won't let you down. Back to Juan's 107. How many hours do you think you have into the tune? Well, the the first day was about six and a half hours, getting plugged in, getting all the updates done, getting the first file in it so that I can start adjusting. I do a couple sessions of V-Tune, and then I do a couple sessions of data logging and look at uh, ignition timing and other things. And then the last two days, we're working in the morning with the cold start, making sure that it starts correctly and can get through the cold start. Not only makes it run better and sound better, but it also helps on the fuel mileage. And so you end up with about 10 hours into these things wow. to make them correct, make those adjustments and come back the next morning and do that again. I knew Alan would get me dialed in right. I feel honored to have a bike in by him and I'm excited to ride that thing and put it on the dyno and see what it makes. So. Like it's like you went up 15%, but you're gonna get another 10 or 15% yeah. of power that was being held back. I have to be careful there. I'm so excited. I, I want to spit out some numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you prefer the TTS over some of the other modulars or, or systems or, you know, ECMs or anything else out there? You got to go back in history. Steve Cole is the guy behind that Screaming Eagle race tuner that was developed for the factory and for dealerships to use. It allows them a plug-in device that allows them full access to make internal changes in the ECM that are not a piggyback system or have to read and then readjust. We're actually adjusting the ECM. So Steve Cole and the TTS is actually the turbo shop. And that's one of his expertise is the electronics inside these ECMs and how to con communicate with them. So efficient. We're getting close to the shop. We'll pull this bike out and we will see what Juan feels different. I brought my helmet and gloves too, so I'm gonna take it for a rip. Hey Juan, did you bring an extra pair of underwear? <laughs> <laughs> Here he is getting suited and booted. Let's go, baby.
We've been back here waiting for Juan and he just rips. It sounds so good. Here he comes pulling in. Let's get his first reaction. Dude. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. I mean, I think the biggest thing, I don't know if you remember when I told you, like your 117, cause it's like bigger displacement. Like it felt like it had more torque still. Like this pulled really good up top, but it was like maybe not as torquey. That's gone. Like it feels like a monster. Like any RPM you get on it, I, I'm pretty sure like I got on the throttle and it was like spinning the tire. <laughs> like it just like lit it up, clicked another gear and it like you feel it a little bit like, all right, all right, this thing is easy. Eating, brother. All right, it's my turn. Woo! You only saw me smoke your tire a little bit right here. I you don't know it. what I did I over there. You. I tell you what, it makes this bike feel so much lighter and it makes it feel exciting to ride. Yeah. Let's put it on the dyno and see what it does. For those of you that want to see numbers, including yourself, Juan, here we go. Thank you to Alan for opening up his shop, his dyno, his knowledge, his brain, and like sharing all this with us and going above and beyond, explaining things and letting us hang out on and off the dyno so much and just messing around. This whole experience has really just been for fun. We knew that we needed to get the right tuner for Juan's bike immediately. But again, it was more about the experience and seeing kind of the trials and tribulations of what happened if we went those other routes. It's been a great experience. So again, thank you, Alan. And let's see what this thing does. Using those O2 sensors you welded in. Yeah. You did put in a good spot. Dude, dude, that's an excellent spot actually. It worked out very well. You guys remember at the beginning of the vlog, Juan welded in these O2 sensors where they were easy to get to. They are for the wideband sensors, so he didn't need to take them off of the stock locations of this exhaust. Look at that. Steamy, brother, we ripped on this thing. <laughs> what are these readers and what are they plugging into? Wideband lambda sensors. Okay. And we use them because of how fast that they read. Uh -huh. Plugging those O2 sensors in. Yep, they go down into the, the dyno circuit board and the readers in there. I want to see 13 O's, 12 8's at wide open throttle. I want to see it cruising at 14 5's, 14 6's. I want it seeing idle at 14 8's, 15 O's. And that'll give us the best fuel mileage and best performance. I felt it. <laughs> <laughs> I just got done riding it. It feels insane. And it sounds better. Like it just, just starting it, it Dude, sounds good. Throttle Crispy. response is crispy at any point like yeah. on the th any gear any rpm just it's yeah there. never yeah. choked or anything like that yeah thank you sir so originally without a tune uh the bike put down 99 horsepower 106 torque with the fueling cam but again terrible tune bike couldn't really uh throttle much past four or five grand because it was running it was still way too rideable. Long. you guys still drove it and rode it and everything but there, there there's a difference when it's correct we're looking at the screen front cylinder rear cylinder engine speed cell torque braking temp Alan did warn one thing before he starts. You did say you might have pulled a little bit of horsepower and torque out of your peak numbers. Because I moved their fuel ratio just a little bit richer. Because gotcha. that would be a peak performance, give me peak numbers. But I also know that if I just run it a little less, we might lose one or two horsepower, but the durability goes way up when I do that little tiny air fuel change. We have some numbers on the paper where we can show you peak performance, but he tuned it for rideability, longevity. Let's see what we get. Let's go, baby. <laughs> That is insane. 
insane. What do you think? <laughs> oh my god. What numbers do we see up there, Juan? It's a couple short on the torque, but we got back the same horsepower today with yeah. the same air fuel, with a better air fuel, so Dude, good stuff, good stuff. 107 horse to the rear tire, 114.5 foot pounds of torque to the tire. And that is insane. Dude, let's exactly, go. Which is exactly what we designed the camshaft for. Yep. Is for one horsepower per cubic inch. To the tire. And so if you want to remember, the whole point was against the 117, right? All right. Dude, it's... we're gonna bring up we're gonna bring up the good number from the other day. And the thing is, I filmed that one part where it was like i was watching the gauges and dude i just watched the, the speedo. speedo just climbing yeah. and go way past 100 just... dude i was watching the speed there's on the, the, on the dyno here. there's the difference right there so the 117 puts down 96 horsepower and 114 torque though cammed 107 with the fueling 472 cam with the fueling 472 cam and the oiling system air filter and the vance and hines two into one exhaust put down 107 horsepower and 116 foot pounds of torque out of the base model 107. Dude, what's up? What do you think about that? It's <laughs> I think, freaking insane. I think, I mean, the power when you rode it was there and it felt aggressive, but really, like this bike compared to mine felt alive. Mine feels tired. Even though the power numbers are close, it just kind of feels like, like it's, it's uh, overweight. Not, like, we're almost 10 horse, we're more than 10 horsepower to the tire. I, I know you want to say it's close. That's 10 to the tire horsepower. Like, <laughs> That's a lot when you're That's talking about 102, 10% different. So I don't know how I'd say close, but dude, yeah, like you said, this thing just came to life. It's if you're snappy. gonna race him on the road for him to have that power, he's in fourth gear and Juan's in sixth gear. So look at the speed difference there look at that oh my gosh dude this thing is freaking me so we're gonna have these dyno charts on our website thrashlandsupply.com in the blog section you'll be able to see these graphs you'll be able to see his torque curve his horsepower curve and all that fun stuff we did six gear pull check that out where is it 60 <laughs> so <I> was like, <laughs> 60. <laughs> Holy hey, cow. I thought we're not going to Sturgis on this because I would have gotten there in half a day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to admit, the tune I'm impressed with, my bike has a terrible tune even though it's stock. The freaking cam is impressive. I When you sent me that dyno graph two days ago or something like that, I immediately called Luke. <laughs> I said, I said, hey, Luke, you got any availability next week to put a cam in on my 117? Oh, no. He's like, come up. We're, this isn't over yet. But we're, oh, no. all right. I'm getting a race. So here the leapfrog starts between friends. <laughs> but us manufacturers love it because here's the leapfrog. You best believe I will be back here in no time with my bike getting a proper tune by Alan and trying to push past these numbers. We're going to do a little bit of yeah. a little race. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give you one ride where I ride well, stock. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Only one. <laughs> I wish the people watching could feel the difference i mean alan really like the tune makes such a big difference the cam is huge yeah. but it goes hand in hand too with the tune and throttle response just how it sounds at idle and the minute you hit the throttle any part of the rpm range or, or speed like it's it's there it's responsive yeah. and, and juan's first baseline when we brought the bike in stock six gear to six gear how this bike came in here with no cam stock engine never opened up it had an air filter and a pipe on it a couple weeks later now with the fueling 472 cam fueling ba air filter vance and hines exhaust tts tune by alan mcbee from 79 horsepower to 107 horsepower so we gained 28 horsepower to the tire all right how much torque did we gain Insane. eight foot pounds of torque these graphs that you can utilize out of the tts out of their data logging yep. is just the, it's gold information for me as a tuner this little bump down here where my arrow is at is showing me places where the ignition timing is trying to detonate or that it's trying to self-retard itself and if i get it out of those little areas the ignition timing will actually stay more advanced and make it feel crisp i mean so the bike if you didn't adjust it the bike would pull out too much would pull out too much and then make it feel lethargic all the time this arrow up here tells me exactly what the millivolts are if you focus in on those two numbers you can see how quickly they change as we run through a throttle 
response and then go into decel and then back on the throttle again. It tells me exactly where the throttle position is and exactly what each cylinder is doing. That information and knowing where the ignition timing is in each one, it also tells you what VE table the system's looking at. The front VE table will always be above itself. The rear VE table will always read below itself. It tries to advance its reading. So people try to adjust it in the wrong places. This will tell you where to adjust it. At. That's freaking insane. It's a really powerful tool with the data logging. It records all of the engine parameters, right? All like, of it. Is insane, but also Alan. You have to know. Yeah, Alan needs to know. You have to know, yeah, you, you to know, you have to know how to on. use it. You so. got to be able to read this graph. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this graph that to me looks like a heartbeat monitor at the doctor's office. Yeah. That's what it. That's exactly what it is. It's <laughs> a heartbeat of my V twin. Yeah. <laughs> what a fuel injection system is using the map sensor. The map sensor, which is manifold pressure. Whether you're at low altitudes or high altitudes, that will change depending on the outside uh, barometer, yep. Yep. barometric pressure. So it automatically adjusts itself there. But all ECMs of today, since the late 90s, early 2000s, have offset adjustments in them. As you shut the vehicle down, it goes through a closing procedure just like a computer does. Okay. It learns those offsets where it was outside of its set parameters. Okay. And then when you turn it back on, it self-adjusts itself. None of the ECMs adjust themselves while it's running. It only remembers those offsets or outside the parameters. It clicks off warnings as you shut the system down. That's why it's important to shut your bike off correctly. And the old bikes, if you shut them off with the with the emergency stop switch, it wouldn't do any house cleaning on the ECM. We used to have to tell them, make sure you turn it off with the key. So the ECM does its house cleaning. So the next time you turn it on, it only gets better and better and better. Dude, next level. Alan, I'm jealous. Thank you. You guys are welcome. Uh, thank you so much. I'm yeah. honored you're, to have you welcome. work on my bike. Thank you so much for following along. Alan, thank you it's so always, much. It's always a pleasure to show you how it's how it's supposed to be when you, when it feels good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for following along. This has been an epic journey. Juan got his bike dialed in. My bike's sadly still at the shop. Maybe we'll get to it on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you guys for following along. We really hope you enjoyed checking out Juan's bike, getting to this level. It's been an insane process. I just want to say thank you to everyone that was involved, yourself, Alan, uh, everyone at Fueling. Dude, I'm freaking stoked. I can't wait to rip this thing some more and show you guys, or share with you guys like how freaking rad it is. I'm gonna race you. I'm gonna try to get as many races as I can before you do anything to it. I want to know what the fuel mileage is. Yeah? I want to know what your fuel mileage is. Because okay. if we can get that kind of performance and we can can get top-notch fuel mileage we can sell parts yeah That's that'll right. be that'll be cool and i'll keep track of that uh, yep. we'll keep you guys in the loop on juan's fuel mileage with that being said we'll see you guys on the next one see you later peace out <laughs>